the Christ candle of hope. God, our loving Father, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, into this world to counter all the forces of evil, sin, suffering, and death, and to overcome evil with the force of good, hatred with the power of love, your great love for us in Jesus. Help us never to curse the darkness, but to join with you in bringing your light into this world, the light that is your Son, born of the Virgin Mary in Bethlehem. Help us to be instruments of your light and love by doing one special act of kindness or by being your special instrument of reconciliation this new year. May the Christ candle we light symbolize our desire to bring light into a world of darkness and hope into a world of despair. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Good morning, everybody, and I would like to welcome you to another Sunday morning service online from the platforms of the Concord United Church uh, website. I hope that you are well and safe from home or wherever you are. Let us come together to worship God. The Acknowledgements of the Lamb. I would like to acknowledge the Wankel clans of the Yoro nations, the first people who were the traditional custodians of this land. We now work and live. I recognize their continuing connections to land, water, and community. And I pay respect to the eldest, past, present, and emerging. A call to worship. To fully say there is no God, we are alone on our own. We gather to declare the glory of God in our lives. The foolish say, it is your life. You are accountable to no one. We gather, strengthened by the Spirit, trusting that Christ dwells in our heart. The foolish say, everything I have is mine. I owe nothing to anyone. We gather to praise the one who call us to serve others in love. Our first hymn for this morning is To God Be the Glory.
prayers of adorations and confession. Let us pray. Most holy God, we confess to you and to each other that we are really just in all our ways and far from being kind in you in all our doings. What we want to be and what we actually are are two different things. Our lives are a mismatch of astuteness and stupidity, of moral strength and cowardice, of kindness and meanness, of openness and cunning, of sincere love for you, yet also of conviving self-interest. We need both your justice and your kindness to convict us of our sins, to forgive and cleanse us, and to save us from the power of evil in the days that lie ahead. We need your mercy to wipe away shame and discipline regrets, your light to give us our bearing and your friendship to delight with us in our happiness and to comfort us in our sorrows. Please grant it to us, loving God, the grace of a new beginning and the joy of an enlarged love for you. Give us a passion for all your loving ways. Through Christ Jesus, our brother and redeemer. The words of assurance. Sister and brother, Holy Scripture says, The Lord is gracious and merciful slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all and his mercy is over all his work. In the name of the living God, for the grace of Christ Jesus the Son and with the authority of the Spirit, I declare to you the forgiveness of sins and a life that is eternal. We will extol you, our God and Saviour, and glorify your names forever and ever. Every day we will praise you and glorify your name forever and ever. Thanks be to God, the service of the word. Reading from Second Samuel chapter 11. The following spring, at the time of the year when kings usually go to war, David sent out Joab with his officers and the Israelite army. They defeated the Ammonites and besieged the city of Rabbah, but David himself stayed in Jerusalem. One day, late in the afternoon, David got up from his nap and went to the palace roof. As he walked around up there, he saw a woman taking a bath in her house. She was very beautiful. So he sent a messenger to find out who she was and learned that she was Bathsheba the daughter of Eliam and the wife of Uriah, the Hittite. David sent messages to get her. They brought her to him and he made love to her. She had just finished her monthly ritual of purification. Then she went back home. Afterwards, she discovered that she was pregnant and sent a message to David to tell him. David then sent a message to Joab. Send me Uriah, the Hittite. So Joab sent him to David. When Uriah arrived, David asked him if Joab and the troops were well and how the fighting was going. Then he said to Uriah, go on home and rest a while. Uriah left and David has a present sent to his home. But Uriah did not go home. Instead, he slept at the palace gate with the king's guards. When David heard that Uriah had not gone home, he asked him, you have not returned home after a long absence. Why didn't you go home? Uriah answered, The men of Israel and Judah are away in battle, and the covenant box is with them. My commander Job and his officers are camping out in the open. How could I go home, eat and drink, and sleep with my wife? By all that's sacred, I swear that I could never do such a thing. So David said, Then stay here the rest of the day, and tomorrow I'll send you back. So Uriah stayed in Jerusalem that day and the next. David invited him to supper and got him drunk. 
but again that night Arai did not go home. Instead he slept on his blanket in the palace guardroom. The next morning David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it by Uriah. He wrote, Put Uriah in the front line where the fighting is heaviest, then retreat and let him be killed. This is the word of the Lord. Reading for today comes from Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14 to 21. For this reason I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. Pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power throughout his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your heart throughout faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to gasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. The Gospel reading for today is I'm going to play that little video clips instead of reading the text to you. After these things, Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. And a great multitude followed him, because they saw his miracles which he did on them that were diseased. And Jesus went up into a mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. And the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was nigh. When Jesus then lifted up his eyes, and saw a great company come unto him, he saith unto Philip, When shall we buy bread, that these may eat? And this he said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred pennyworth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may take a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, saith unto him, There is a lad here which hath five barley loaves and two small fishes, but what are they among so many? And Jesus said, Make the men sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down, in number about five thousand. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples, and the disciples to them that were set down. And likewise of the fishes, as much as they would, when they were filled, he said unto his disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. Therefore they gathered them together, and filled twelve baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves, which remained over and above unto them that had eaten. Then those men, when they had seen the miracle that Jesus did, said, This is of a truth, that prophet that should come into the world. When Jesus therefore perceived that they would come and take him by force to make him a king, he departed again into a mountain himself alone. And when even was now come, his disciples went down unto the sea and entered into a ship and went over the sea toward Capernaum. And it was now dark, and Jesus was not come to them. And the sea arose by reason of a great wind that blew. So when they had rowed about five and twenty or thirty furlongs, they see Jesus walking on the sea and drawing nigh unto the ship, and they were afraid. But he saith unto them, It is I, be not afraid. Then they willingly received him into the ship.
and immediately the ship was at the land whither they went. The day following, when the people which stood on the other side of the sea saw that there was none other boat there, save that one whereinto his disciples were entered, and that Jesus went not with his disciples into the boat, but that his disciples were gone away alone. Howbeit there came other boats from Tiberias nigh unto the place where they did eat bread. After that the Lord had given thanks. When the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, neither his disciples, they also took shipping and came to Capernaum seeking for Jesus. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for the gift of your word. And we ask the Holy Spirit to guide us today. Soften our hearts and our minds so that we can hear and accept your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The proclamations of the word. Our theme for this morning is called The Sign. Every day you're driving on the road, you see signs sign and actually pointing to where they go. There's different signs of warning you there's a tenuous part of the road. And there's different signs actually trying to help us as we travel or also help us to understand where we are and what we should do. This morning I want to talk about sign in the light of the gospel of John chapter 6. Verse 1 to verses 21. Last week in the Gospel of Mark, Jesus looked at the people. They were like sheep without a shepherd. And his heart was with them. He had compassion for them. And at the end, he taught them and healed their sickness. This week we have been given the two miracle stories that have been omitted from the from the reading last week, but instead of continuing on Mark's gospel, this week, this week we have been given the two miracle stories that have been omitted from the last week reading, but from the gospel of John's perspective. It is essential to know why the lectionary is doing this. I would say that the reason is in John's gospel. There are seven miracles in John's gospel. The fourth evangelist names them a sign. Although miracles still claim an activity that defied the law of nature, the fourth gospel saw miracles as signs that always point beyond themselves to something else when it happened. So to stand with John's gospel perspective this morning, the miracles of the feedings of the five thousands and Jesus calmed the storm has become the two signposts pointed beyond himself to Jesus, the Son of God, support the fourth gospel central claim that he is the Son of God, and whoever believes in him will have eternal life. Let us think of the context of the story. It was the time of the Passover festival when these two miracle signs occurred. It will perhaps give us a fair idea of why Jesus performed these two miraculous activities. The central themes of feeding and crossing had may have contained the festival's two main significant talking points, which reminded the people of Israel of the God who fed them in the deserts and crossed them over the Red Sea. So celebrations were based on the past salvation activities work of God. It does make sense. However, in comparisons, the miraculous activities performed by Jesus happened to help reveal that the same God was with them in the test 
who opened the Red Sea for them to cross over is the same God present in his son Jesus Christ, which later in this, in this chapter said that he will be the bus over lamb for the sins of the world. It is recognised that the developments of the text revealed how the gospel of John remained faithful to its claim to redirect the attention to the present realities of Jesus, the Son of God. Therefore, feeding and crossing the sea narrative aimed to open the why questions of the Passover festivities among Jews and Gentiles. Indeed, something extraordinary had happened and they have felt God has present in their midst, in and through Jesus. The miraculous activities Jesus had performed achieved what they were meant to deliver after all. The worry was even his disciples misread the sign, therefore misunderstood Jesus as well. Philip's missed that completely. What he said, we don't have enough money. Andrew said, we only have three loaves of bread and two fish, and it is not enough. These attitudes were bizarre for those who had followed Jesus for quite some time. They were like sheep with a shepherd, yet unhinged, who has looked after them and who they belong. The presence of Jesus, the Son of God, in their midst gave a notice from their mind according to the story. However, the Gospel story has affirmed that Jesus precisely knew what he would do even though he asked Philip a question to test him. George mentions that after the miracle, people came and tried to force him to be the king. This movement by the people lets us know that they got the message. The miracles work as a sign, but again, they seem to use that for their own political and social agendas, which means they see the signpost, but they twist it, it for their agenda. On the other hand, the people were right. He is the king, but unfortunately, not the kind of king that they wanted him to be. This led to the total misunderstanding for the fact that Jesus' kingship was given to him because he's God's son. In that way, his obedience to the Father, to the point of death, crowned him king, the king of king and the Lord of Lord. What are we take from these scriptures today? Some people find it's harder to accept God's sign that have been revealed in Jesus for so many reasons. For some was too good to be true. Maybe some people read the sign differently and interpreted it in the way they want it to be. Like the Jews who came to force him to be the king. However, later in this chapter, some of them left Jesus because he said that if you eat from from my body and drink from my blood, you will have eternal life. Like Andrew, some may feel that they are not worth, that they are not worth, perhaps too little to follow and understand the sunpost direction, even though they dream of being in that destination. The most disappointing fact, if we think of our situation today as believers, we have faith in Jesus, the Son, of God, which means we have been given our destiny. We are God's children in Christ. We have everything for Him and in Him. As highlights by Ben Myers, and I quote, we are like people who have inherited a vast estate. We have the study, the documents, and visit different locations because it's more than we can take in at a single cleanse. In the same way, it takes considerable time and effort to begin to comprehend all that we need we have received in Christ. Theologically thinking, theologically thinking does not add a single thing to what we have received. 
the inheritance remained the same whether we grasped it magnitude or not. But the better we grasped it, the happier we are. This is my prayer for all of us. I believe that in the lights of what the gospel wants us to experience today, empower and strengthen by the gospel of children's perspective, perspective, that the miraculous activities performed by Jesus cannot be separated from Jesus who has performed it. The signs are pointing to himself after all. So having faith in the Son of God, confirm our destiny, our inheritance, if you like. So with God in Christ, God will change our life in and from miraculous work of and by Jesus. And we will finally become a signpost to lead people to God in part in partners with Christ and go heirs to the kingdom we participate in God's mission to flourish every humanity and the creation i pray that we continue as individual and as a church to be assigned in and with Christ for the kingdom of God's love amen the prayers of the people Do it again prayers of the people let us pray loving god you are our creator and sustainer when you open your hand you satisfy the hunger and thirst of every living thing and so we look to you wherever you are in need trusting in your love and your abundant goodness as you once fed the hungry crowds with five loaves and two fishes. We ask that you would again fill those who are empty this day. Pour out your spirit on all who hunger and thirst. We pray for those who are physically hungry, whose stomachs are empty. We think especially of the people in Somalia and East Africa who are facing critical food source shortages who are suffering the effects of malnutrition and starvation and watching helplessly as loved ones die. Lord, in your mercy, open your hand, pour out your spirit so that they may be filled. We pray for those who are empty emotionally, who are lonely and long for companionship and love, who are caught in the grip of depression and overwhelmed with grief. Lord, in your mercy, open your hand, pour out your spirit so that they may be filled. We pray for those who are spiritually empty, who are troubled and don't know where to turn, who long for purpose and meaning but don't know where to look, who you who need you, but do not know, yet know you. Lord, in your mercy, open your hand. Pour out your spirit, so that may be filled. Lord, we praise you for the abundant gifts of, in our lives. Pour out your spirit on us as well. Fill us with your compassion and love so that we would be willing to share some of the abundance with those who have need. Lord, in your mercy, open your hand, pour out your spirit so that they may, may be filled. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, who came so that all humanity might come to know the abundance of life that comes from you. Amen. Our last hymn is in Christ. Alone. Oh. 
blessing, the love of God enfolds you, the wisdoms of Christ enlightened you, and the fire of the Spirit inflame you. And may the blessings of the Holy Triune God rest upon you and abide with you now and evermore. Go out in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>